illusion, I'll just uh, italicize my name as Elizabeth, which means it's not on the paper. And it's called an act. A-C-T. All words that start with a vowel. A, E, I, O, and U are followed by two consonants, means no contract. You're going to say, where do I find that rule? Look up every word in the dictionary. Get yourself a nice eight inch thick Webster's Unabridged Dictionary and look up every word okay. that starts with a vowel and two consonants. And then all the synonyms that reflect that word and you will find a no contract, a negative condition of state for every single word. So the word N act means no contract. Right, ACT means no contract. I was under the impression that the police was enacting an act of parliament. And how do you spell enact? E N A C T. Which means no act, which so means no contract. So it's a no no contract. <laughs> 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 which part of no don't we understand? The N or the O? <laughs> so what you're saying is the whole court system it's based on um, dealing with no rules, no law, um, and it's set up in such a way there is no way you can win in that, even under their own, their own system. Nope, that's not true. Not anymore. No until syntax came along, until I showed up out here with the syntax on how to do uh, quo warranto complaints and teach you guys how to do your quo warranto complaints. This is a room. This room has four corners. This is a box. In this box, this is an enclosed area. Everything that happens in here has nothing to do with the rest of the world. All the information you learn here today is at a closed area for you people only. So this is a isolated scenario. This explains why they think they have the right to change anything that happens in the court that's being taped. Uh, no. So it is written, so it shall be done. Does 2 plus 2 equal 4? Well, that's what I was taught. T-O plus T-O-O -O equals F-O-R. T-W-O and T-O equals F-O-R-E. Did you hear what I said, what I meant what I said? What two I said, what I meant what I said? Four. You said two plus two equals four? Right. T-O plus T-O-O -O equals F-O-R. I can do it 120 different ways. I got it. I think we need a wet rag here or one with alcohol on it. In 4700 BC, Pharaoh said, so it is written, so it shall be done. And re there was a reason for that. Because oral contracts cannot be seen or proven. Because of the argument, you got two now tilde is location. This is not a value. This is a location. The address on your home is a location. It is not a value. You write your address. My address is tilde. 5166, tilde, north. North is not a direction, it's a location of direction. Tilde, 63rd Street. And so, thank you. Uh, the city of Milwaukee is a name, but it's also a location on a map. So therefore it's a tilde Milwaukee, tilde Wisconsin, tilde zip code. Everybody goes, well, we got to put a bracket around so we, we, we're not in the postal zone. You put a tilde in front of the zip code. They copyrighted just the number. You copyrighted the location with a tilde. You are correct. They are not. So if you write, if you do
So 7 times 7 is 49 times 6. 300 divided by 2 is 150. 2 plus 2 is equal 4. Did you hear what I said, what I meant, what I said, when I said, what I meant, what I said, and only one is correct? If you don't see it written, you can't prove it. Anybody wants to, when you write a contract, you go into court, you have a syntax document. You are filing a lawsuit with an accuracy of 1 to 900 for every word. Your correct sentence structure communication syntax balance of the order of operations of cause and effect, a verb of thinking, a possessive of with, and an authorization of by the gives you an order of operations for every sentence that follows the rules of the operations of a court. So every single sentence is its own independent court as you make an argument. We're not dealing with 150 to 1 variables in an oral conversation. So your paperwork is going to speak for you. Why do you think the government or shut the government down here in Australia and in New Zealand and the United States 19 times? Because they got caught in a lie and they didn't know what to do with themselves. They had to go out and study. They have to come up to speed with this thing. Every court in the world has to do this. And when you take English through syntax through this program, and you translate it to Spanish, Spanish to French, French to German, German to Russian, Russian to uh, Indian, Indian to Chinese, Chinese to Japanese, and back to English, you don't lose any words. It's a math problem. Just because there's 5,000 different signs and symbols for things, it's a math problem. And you can't change a math problem. That's the accuracy and the beauty of this technology. She goes to the second and third word be the rest? No, because you can take any one of these times any one of these to equal one of these. That's how you get your variables. 7 times 7 is 49 times 6 is 300 divided by 2. Otherwise, you repeat yourself. Explain the PWR plus PWR. This one? That's a tilde. It's a location. This is the number. This is the written number. This is the, the hieroglyph number. How do you end up with four? F-O-R, F-O-R-E, F-O-U-R, the number four, tilde four. Those are locations when you put a tilde in front. Now, F-O-Y-E, doesn't that mean before? It's what you hear, not what's written. Did you hear what I said? What I meant, what I said, what I said, what I meant, what I said. I'm communicating to you. It isn't what's written here. I'm writing to show you how many ways I can write it to show you the variables. But when I speak it in one terminology, which one of the 150 variables up here that I just say to you? You don't know that. And because you don't know that, you're going to make a presumption Opinion, presumption, guess, perjury, a lie. How many different mistakes can you make? <laughs> and that's only one word, or that's only three words. Try doing it with a lawsuit with uh, 30,000 words on it. What do you think the, uh, your, your variables are here? You're talking about quadruple uh, terabyte to the terabyte power of variables. You, you can't get to a fact. If you can't have a fact, what are we doing? We're lying to each other. My technology brings us to a position of accuracy that cannot be argued. And the court room is a building. That is not the document on the piece of paper. When you write a lawsuit, the paper that you have, where's my paper? When you, have, when you have the lawsuit, this is the court, folks. As a judge, I swear to support the Constitution of the United States. The United States means two or more people coming together in a closed area. Doesn't this have thing four corners? It's four, this is a closed area. It's called paper. It carries the cargo words. The words have terms and definitions. This book not only has a sentence, but every word in this book is defined and has a syntax, quantumized definition. Every word is accounted for in this book, including a lot more words. It took Russell and I six years, 12,000 hours, 
we had a team of guys breaking up A, B, C, D, E. And of all the two million words in the English language, we've got 720 words that are syntax. That's it. Pretty simple. Average person has a 12,000 word vocabulary, you only need 720 to learn syntax. And in 99% of the cases, you use less than 50 different words in an entire lawsuit to win your case. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure this out. It's, it's so simple. Once you get it, it's, it's mathematical. But this is the court. This is the contract between you and the judge. The courtroom is irrelevant. The seals that are hanging on the walls are irrelevant. This flag is the correct sentence structure communication syntax flag, which advertises that this is correct. You place a postage stamp up on your corner. You sign across it. That makes you the postmaster transporting the vessel of the document to the clerk of the court, which is the port of the court. She puts her stamp on it. When she puts her stamp on it, you sign your name across her stamp, making you a postmaster of not only your paperwork and your vessel, but now you're in contract with the port, port authorities of the court, because this is a courthouse, which is a foreign vessel in dry dock, so you've entered a foreign vessel. Now you're the postmaster and clerk of a foreign vessel in dry dock. Now you've got a 24 karat gold bonded, document that has to go into court. But if you're, going to, if you're going to sign the stamp on the front, you have to also endorse the back of the top of the cover page because that's called an endorsement. How many of you can cash a check at the bank without endorsing your check? Nobody. Because if you take the document and you roll it up, when you unroll it, the top of the back, when they seal those scrolls, they would put a seal on it. That was the endorsement. And that, that gave the document its value. And not only that, this book is bonded together. When I went to court in 1997, I used to have three ring notebooks with my paperwork in it. I went to testify. The judge says, what are you doing? He says, well, I'm testifying to my book. He says, that's all loose paper. He says, you've got to have a bonded book in order to be an author with the authorization to talk about the authority of your authentic document. And it's a document, that's why you get a docket number when it, the vessel comes to the court and it gets docketed. It's a staple considered? No, staples, maritime law staples is not bonded together. However, you use a merit, you put the staple as a mechanical device to hold the papers together and then take super glue, put a drop on it, and the capillary attraction will, will fuse the papers together. Uh, you can have three forms of bonding. You can glue it, you can stitch it, and you can rivet it. I sent Janet Reno a letter charging her with treason against the United States, and she sent me back a letter, two-page letter, with six three-eighths of an inch brass rivets. There were six big, thick brass rivets to hold two sheets of paper. She says, you want bonded documents? Here's a bonded document. <laughs> But that's, I don't know if you've ever seen Janet Reno. She stands six foot eight. Um, you went through that a little next fast. To her, he's about this high. <laughs> yes? You went through that a little fast. I'm sure some of the people here would, would like to use a, a, a basic uh, common uh, um, practice that we have. Let's say uh, we go to a court with a affidavit. Well, let's see if I get this correct. What you're saying is that we actually put our own seal and put some sort of stamp with you're going to use your navigator stamp. Your navigator stamp has uh, two bars through the dollar sign. Now, you have your dollar signs come in two forms. This is a Federal Reserve note, and that's a gold certificate. The navigator stamp of Australia is a gold certificate. In the United States, since 1900, the red fox stamp was the only one that was published with two bars through the dollar sign. And that was published on the 2nd of November, 1999, when the United States ended its third bankruptcy and became sovereign. And then when we went out and bought up all this, our, my students all over the United States went out immediately and bought up all the red fox stamps. And then we started putting them on all of our documents to sue government officials. That explains why I can't find any. <laughs> <laughs> the judges ordered that all the, the red fox stamps be canceled and, and seized wherever they were in the United States and destroyed so they didn't have any gold standard stamps out there. 
but we've had, we've got several thousand of them to use on all of our official documents that we use constantly. Good, I'll see you after. <laughs> um, okay, with that document, um, we put in a, a, a stamp, if we can get one, and then we, we sign across the stamp. Then when we go to lodge it in a court, in a file, they will, the court will stamp it with their stamp. Yeah, they'll put, a, they'll put their file stamp. See, now first you get a, what's called a receive stamp, which means they're going to receive the documents and they're going to issue a summons to come to court. Right. Okay. You have to then serve the document on the people and have your return service from the, the people you're serving a document on. And those have to be attached, uh, return service, back to the court with your lawsuit. And then they will give you a file stamp. And then it goes to the judge for when you're going to have it and schedule for hearing. Um, here, the, the normal, uh, my understanding of the normal procedure is that when you file it with the court, they put a stamp on it. Mm -hmm. okay. But I don't think they, they write anything on it. The clerk of the court, who is the port authority receiving a vessel at, her de at, at the desk, is supposed to initial, put her initials on that stamp upon receiving it. And it, at the same time, the, the one that they keep for their file, you sign your name across that, as well as all those you're going to serve on the other people, making you a postmaster, bank banker, and judge, because you canceled the stamp. That gives you the authority as a postmaster to transport the vessel of the lawsuit between your home and the port authorities. So if there is a stamp on the documents they received or the stamp and documents you've received being served by them and has no signature of the person. Then you sign it. it. You take jurisdiction. Capture it. As long as you got their stamp, you sign across it. You captured their jurisdiction. You become the clerk of the court. And what's the practical purpose for that? The practical purpose is that not, you are the individual that's going to be transporting this document. If you don't sign it, you don't become the clerk, and you don't sign your name across the stamp, You've skipped over the postmaster's position to move the vessel. How does it go from point A to point B? Is it magic? You're creating a paper trail of authority. You're the author. You have the authority and postmaster to move that. And when you hand that up to a judge, um, or the judge already has it in his file because we have filed it, how is he going to deal with that since you're the postmaster general and he works he's a postmaster also he all judges are postmasters bankers and judges look up bankers in the black's law dictionary it says see postmasters and judges look up judges says post postmasters and bankers look up bankers he says postmasters and judges <laughs> so the purpose of this procedure is to force a judge to um, consider the document presented in truth Cor no, truth is an opinion, to be correct. In opinion. Right. And judges only issue opinions. The word order, O-R-D, voluntary consents, means no contract because you wrote the whole order in adverb verb. It's an illusion. You syntax any judge's orders he gives you, and it's, even if he says you win, here's your win, an adverb verb, you haven't won anything. It's just an illusion. You syntax it and you say, I want to correct one. Write up your own order and syntax and have him sign it. He'll do it. Mm, thank you. <laughs> he doesn't want to think. Remember, the reason for thinking is to abolish thinking. Thinking hurts the brain. Thinking hurts the person. That's why we got ditch diggers and punch press operators. Because it's too, it hurts too much to think. And people that want to think and they become great thinkers, you don't see them doing physical labor because they've learned how not to hurt. Their brain is a curiosity machine that just can't get enough. Question. I wanted to go back to the um, uh, 2022 when we um, come out of international bankruptcy. Does that mean Australia becomes a republic? No, a republic means no people. Okay. Does a it, democracy does it... means demonology. Uh, you're going to become sovereign. You become a sovereign nation on a gold standard because you, your country is only scratched a couple feet above the surface on how much gold you've got out here. You've got a lot of gold here. I does, mean, just, does, it, does it mean that some other country can invade us? 
Uh, it does, but it won't happen because of the toys that the planet has now in place. Okay. Cool. <laughs> Everybody knows what I mean by toys. <laughs> Nobody's going to interfere. You guys are traded on the New York Stock Exchange. You're about as American as you're going to get down here, you know? <laughs> Everything's about commerce. They don't want wars. You know, if you ask a military person, what is your job title? He says, I'm in the business of mind control. I control your mind or I replace it with a bullet. <laughs> what do you think of that a war going on over there? Every time you got differences between two people, they either want to kill each other, they won't sit down and talk. I'll tell you a little story about something that happened. I'm over in Hawaii, and I'm flying back to the United States from Hawaii, going into, to, it was supposed to be a nonstop flight from uh, Milwaukee to Chicago. I mean, from uh, Honolulu to Chicago. And they stick me way back in row uh, 70, I think it was row 75, on a 76 seat 747. And there's a lady sitting next to me, I says, what do you do? She says, oh, I'm a school teacher. So I'm going, well, this is cool. We'll sit and we'll discuss syntax. And then her daughter is sitting next to her and she's, she's complaining about having to move all the time. I says, why don't you like it in Hawaii? Because she was going to the University of Miami. She says, no. She says, I, I got to move all the time. I says, well, why, why do you move? And she says, well, my husband's in the military. And I says, well, uh, what does he do? Well, he's in the Navy. What is, what is he? He says he's Admiral Nimitz of the Nimitz Attack Group. Pearl Harbor, aircraft carriers, mm -hmm. about 35 ships. <laughs> I'm going, oh, I'm sitting next to the wife of the Joint Chiefs of Staff and just got promoted to Washington, D.C., who's just been transferred from the Nimitz Attack Group to Joint Chiefs of Staff to handle the Israeli-Palestine uprising. And I'm sitting next to her, and I'm the guy teaching her syntax language. So the guy sitting directly in front of me all of a sudden, like, collapses. And it's supposedly he has a heart attack, right? Well, he's Secret Service. And uh, the stewardess comes over, and the captain gets on the phone a few minutes later. We need anybody that's a heart surgeon. We have a man with a heart attack. So the three heart surgeons show up, and they're all standing there. And they're not, they're not doing anything. The captain comes back and says, what's going on here? Why aren't you guys taking care of this man? He just had a heart attack. Well, we don't have a medical release. He says, you don't seem to understand. You're on my vessel in my sea of space, and I'm the captain of this vessel, and I will lock you in the toilet in the brig if you don't take care of this man. So the one doctor, he goes over, and the guy grabs him, pulls him down, looking between the seats, and he whispers something in his ear. And he goes running back up to the front of the plane. The captain comes on the phone a few minutes later and says, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to have to stop in L.A. The man who had a heart attack needs a medical, immediate medical assistance. So we land in L.A. at the end of the runway. The whole plane gets surrounded by squad cars. In comes two guys with a stretcher and six guys in black uniforms. The two guys carry this guy off the plane, and the six black uniforms sit down in the row behind us. Secret Service, military, Secret Service, for the Joint Chiefs of Staff to protect his wife and, her, and, the, <laughs> and the daughter. And I had seven hours to teach her syntax language. I says, now, how do I talk to the Joint Chiefs of Staff and educate the Pentagon in Washington on syntax? Well, who sleeps with the Joint Chiefs of Staff? His wife, who's an English teacher and understands exactly what I'm saying. <laughs> Her son just got transferred to Palestine in the, in the Navy. I says, you want to protect your son? Talk to your husband about syntax. I'll write the syntax treaty between Palestine and Israel. And we'll stop the war. Now I have her attention. To save her son's life, she's going to learn about syntax. I give her one of my books. You haven't heard any noise from the Palestine-Israeli conflict in quite a few years, have you? It's been pretty quiet over there. You see, so sometimes God moves in mysterious ways. Puts people together. What is the Joint Chiefs of Staff wife doing in row 75 on a 747? She should be on a mil flying first class up in the front of the plane. 
circumstances because it was a sold out flight and there was only one seat of it, two seats available at the back of the plane. And so she got stuck on there because of some other appointment that happened. And why was I sitting next to her? Of all people in the world, the only person with syntax in the whole world to be sitting next to her. I, I missed my plane. I thought I got the times wrong, so I missed my flight. I was in, in row 30. I always fly the exit rows in row 30. So I got a lot of leg room on a 747. So because I missed my flight, I got stuck in the back with her. So there was divine intervention that I misread my tickets. She misread her tickets, and we both wound up together in the back of the plane. So I had all this time to teach her about syntax. And shortly thereafter, I went to the Pentagon and I became muster master for the Navy, which uh, means I will protect all Navy, Air Force, Marine Corps, Army personnel from any apartheid or genocide lawsuits from any foreign government. That's my duties with the, because I'm, I hold the syntax secrets. Was there a question? What do you mean? It's been two hours already? It's 11 o'clock. You guys want to take a 15 minute break? I've got about a dozen of my clients here today, and you mentioned before that uh, you're a 90-second mason. A few right. of them have come to me at the break with concerns around that. Just wondering if you could qualify that so that, um, so that they're... Uh, Masonry worldwide goes up to 34 degrees. However, the, there's a... Uh, in Manly Hall's The Secret of All Ages, <clears throat> the amount of information that is in that one book is the accumulation of 8,500 years of history of all the different religions that have taken place throughout history, uh, different cults, uh, Pharisees, illusions that um, manipulated mankind, the, the creation of the boogeyman to keep people scared so that they could always look for protection from something. The Masonic codes, no matter what language it was written in, had one third of all the words missing. And my technology through algebra puts the missing words in and brings it all into now time. It takes all negative out of the language and only brings it into a now time positive. So it allows me all the hidden secrets that are built into all the sentence structure. And so when I get with a group of Masons, they have their agenda of what they believe. But their beliefs were based on adverb, verb, illusions. So then it's my job to go ahead and syntax it and bring it into now time facts and show them what the true meaning of whatever they want. The amount of information is so vast that <clears throat> for me to publish it, it'd be like trying to syntax the Bible or the Quran. I mean, these are, these are huge books with thousands of pages. It would take a lifetime to do it. So based on each individual's needs on whatever their limited education is based on, I will answer questions on a one-to-one, -one, question to question basis and syntax it for you. And I'll do it for anybody at any time. We have ministers from all over the United States that contact me on email from all different faiths. And they want me to syntax a single phrase and they will, use, they will take that single phrase and make an entire one-hour presentation to their parish. And where they used to have 30 or 40 people come to church, they have standing room only now because the people are there because they want to see the syntax facts. It changes your entire perspective of what truth is or correctness. You said you're at 97. What does that mean? And that means that my technology abridges all the Masons worldwide. These, the secrets that they think that they have are misinformation. And I don't practice any specific religion or faith. I believe in God. I believe in goodness. And I, I maintain my life to be a correct, in a correct position. And by being correct about things on a mathematical level, it allows me to talk to audiences that are come from thousands of different cultures, definitions, religions, and maintain peace amongst the, my students. Because I, here's a technology that has to be translated to all six billion humans without insulting any faith, uh, political belief, sex, 
customs. I mean, when you 